So again, good morning, everyone, and uh, and I am we're 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 here at the Divine Mercy Sunday, and uh, all of you are are in at your homes right now, uh, and we're in this lockdown mode for I think six weeks now. Okay, I think it started in mid March. And uh, we're, we're really practicing this social distancing. We can't go to school. We can't go to, to work. We can't hang out with our friends. And uh, uh, it's bothering us, right? And uh, we, we practice the, this social di- distancing that even Satan couldn't come near to us. Why? Because whenever we're tempted by Satan, what we need to say to him is that, get behind me, Satan, six feet apart, right? So... Anyway, so we're, we're doing this, uh, 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 a lot of like social dancing, and it's a struggle. And many people will say that, oh, this, uh, a, a lot of like extroverts are struggling with this social distancing because, as you know, uh, extroverts like to hang out with people and like that. Uh, but it's not just the extroverts. Even the introverts are struggling with all this, right? And uh, for me, I thought, I thought uh, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm an introvert, so... Uh, I, I read this book, uh, uh, in, uh, Quiet, by Susan Cain, for, for all the introverts out there, read this book. And I learned in that book that I'm not an introvert. I'm an extrovert. And, uh, but even introverts, they, they long to connect with people, with, with a few close uh, friends that they like to connect with. You know, so so we're, we're, all on, on, we're all in the same boat here. We're all struggling. And the reason why we're all struggling it's because we are designed for communion. We're designed to connect with people. In Genesis uh, chapter 1, verse 26, when God created uh, uh, the human beings, he said, he said, he says, and now we will make human beings. They will be like us and resemble us. So God here is talking about when he's referring to we and us, he's referring to the Holy Trinity. You know, the communion between God the Father, God the Son, and the God, God the Holy Spirit. So when he says that he created us in his image, we are created for communion. Again, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, uh, this is after God created uh, everything, right? You know, the, 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 the six days of creation, after each creation, he says, this is good. It is good. This is the first time that God says, it is not good. Okay? And so it says here in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, it says, It is not good for the man to live alone. I will make a suitable companion to help him. Okay? So we, we can't live in isolation. You know, th- th- that's why... Um, uh, the, the greatest punishment that you could give to a prisoner is solitary confinement. And, and prisoners who are in sol- solitary confinement, they could go crazy because we are not designed that way. We're designed for communion. We're designed to connect. That's why we need to find creative ways to connect with people. I, I saw this video on Facebook uh, in Italy. In Italy, there's a lot of like buildings there, and people are going to their balcony of their unit and they're just celebrating with people, you know, uh, drinking and dancing and, 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 and singing. And uh, it's, it's, it, it, we need to find creative ways to connect. I know uh, a lot of people are using Zoom right now, Zoom meetings. I've, I, I know uh, here in this parish, I've attended uh, some Zoom meetings with the marriage prep uh, team, um, the, the youth and also the alpha. And I would like to, to join more of the Zoom meetings here in the parish. Uh, but also just making phone calls. Call people, especially call people, those who are living alone. Just say hi to them. See how they're doing and, and ask you know, if, if they need anything. And, uh, but also, like r- right now, um, uh, we're in unprecedented time. People couldn't come to church. That's why for us pastors, for us priests, we need to find ways to reach out to people. And then uh, uh, for the past few weeks, uh, the Lord is putting... Uh, into my heart to, to go to venture into this uh, unchar- uncharted territory for me to go and minister to the people through social media like YouTube. And uh, Father Mark Goring has been mentoring me in, in this. So for those of you, you know, pl- please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And uh, this is the way really to, to reach out uh, to people and to connect with people. So 
today is Divine Mercy Sunday. And uh, for me, I, I love Divine Mercy Sunday. And it's through the efforts of, uh, of, of Pope John Paul II that the messages of Jesus given to uh, the Saint Faustina, um, in, uh, who died in 1938 and canonized in the year 2000, that these messages that was found in this diary has been known to all the world. And for me, I was one of the, the one who really benefited from that. Because uh, there, was, there was at one point in my life wherein I, I was kind of becoming like scrupulous. You know, I, I struggled with my sins and uh, I couldn't trust that God could forgive me for all the sins that I've done. I struggled. I would go to confession, and then after leaving confession, I would still have that doubt. And reading the diary of St. Faustina consoled me so much. You know, I, and for those great sinners out there like me, you, 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 we need to read the diary of St. Faustina. So I'll be quoting some of the passages from the diary of St. Faustina. So get ready, write, down, write it down. In, diary, in the diary of St. Faustina, in section 598, it says here, uh, Jesus, uh, it says here in the diary, And fear nothing, dear soul, where, whoever you are, the greater the sinner, the greater his right to your mercy, O Lord. So this is St. Faustina saying, okay? So the greater the sinner, the greater the right to your mercy, okay? The, the, the greater the right to his mercy. Also in the, uh, the diary, in section 1182, it says here, your misery does not hinder my mercy. So this is Jesus speaking to St. Faustina. My daughter, write that the greater the misery of a soul, the greater its right to my mercy. All souls to trust in the unfathomable abyss of my mercy because I want to save them all. When I read this, oh my goodness, it was a great consolation for me, okay? So, uh, we, and also in, in, in the diary, it talks about all our sins, all our sins combined. It's just like one drop to the ocean of God's mercy, okay? So what a beautiful uh, uh, thing to know. And, and for us, especially for us priests, we really need to proclaim to the world the good news about God's mercy. Because mercy is God's greatest attribute. In, in diary uh, section 611, it says here, uh, St. Faustina is speaking to the Lord, Oh, how great is the mercy of the Lord. It surpasses all his other qualities. Mercy is the greatest attribute of God, okay? So, so this is beautiful. But the message of, of divine mercy is not just for great sinners. It's not just for great sinners. It is also for those who are living in fear, who are worrying so much, who are in anxiety. This is message is for all of you, including me, okay? And... Uh, Especially with, 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 with this COVID-19 pandemic, we're, we're, a lot of people are living in fear. We're afraid. We're worried that we will contract this disease, this virus, and then we will die. We're afraid of dying. Okay? We're also afraid of, uh, right now, we don't have work. Uh, here in Canada, we're blessed. Uh, the government is, is, is financing us right now. But for those who are in third world country, you're, you're struggling financially. You don't have work or, or your, your business is, you couldn't do business right now. So you're being affected financially and, and, and a lot of people are, are worrying. So, so this message is, is, you know, and I'd just like to, to, to explain to you the difference between fear and anxiety. I've read this from uh, the book uh, by Max Lucado uh, entitled Anxious for Nothing. I, I, for those who are living in anxiety, who's struggling with that, re read that book. He says in this book, there's a difference between fear and anxiety. Fear and anxiety are cousins, but not twins. Fear, what is fear? He says, fear is seeing that there's a threat, and when we see a threat, 
we either fight or flight. But anxiety, anxiety is imagining a threat. And it creates doom and gloom. So there's a difference between fear and anxiety. Very close, but not the same. And the Lord in Scripture has exhorted us again and again, do not be anxious. Okay, in in, in, in uh, Luke chapter 21, verse 34, it says, Be careful or your hearts will be weighed down with the anxieties of life. It could weigh our life down if we're having a lot of like anxieties. Also in, in uh, uh, Luke, Luke chapter 12, verse 22 and 25, Jesus said, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you shall eat, nor about your body, what you shall put on. And in verse 25 it says, And while of you, and which of you, by being anxious, can add a cubit to a span of life. So the Lord is telling us not to be anxious. And again, this is a very classic example of me preaching and not being able to practice what I preach. I, I know there was time where in, I, I struggle with a lot of anxiety, a lot of fear, a fear of, uh, uh, of, of failure, fear of being rejected by people. And uh, even in my priesthood, I, 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 uh, there was a point where in, I, was, I was in anxiety whenever I would prepare my homilies. I, I would research, I would prepare, I would spend a lot of like, time and, and there will time wherein, wherein before I, I preach, I would have panic attacks. I would be so nervous, really, honestly. You know, I, I think the Lord has healed me right now of, of, of that anxiety. Uh, uh, I'm, not, I, I'm, I'm still nervous, you know. There's still butterflies in my stomach whenever I, I, whenever I preach. But I, I'm no longer anxious. I'm no longer anxious. The Lord has healed me of that. So... In, in, I would just like to share with you why are we living in fear? Why are we anxious? We're living in fear and we're anxious because underneath that, we lack trust in God. And because we lack trust in God, we rely on our own self. There's self-reliance. And we know time again and again and again how ourselves have failed us. Okay? And, and in, in, in this diary, Jesus was, uh, was correcting uh, uh, St. Faustina because of, of, of her self-reliance. And it's in diary, uh, the diary in section 1488. In 1488, Jesus is telling St. Faustina, You see, my child, what you are of yourself. The cause of your falls is that you rely too much upon yourself and too little on me okay self-reliance have failed us that's why we're living in fear we can't trust god we can't trust trust ourselves we can't trust uh, other people so that's why we're living in fear and we're living in anxiety and wh why couldn't we trust god maybe that's the question that you had, it, uh, and i think it has to do with uh People, the negative experience that we had with the people in authority in our lives, okay? This could be our parents, teachers, uh, uncles, uh, our coach, whoever, whoever. We had a negative experience with them. Uh, uh, for me, uh, I don't judge these people. Maybe, you know, they had the good intentions, but the impact in our life was not ideal, okay? You know, so let's say, Maybe, you know, growing up, maybe your, your parents uh, were very distant to you. And because of that, you project that to God as being a distant God. Or whenever, or, or when, when, you're, when you're growing up, you know, your, 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 your teachers was very critical of you when you whenever you commit mistakes. And you project that to God. When you commit mistakes, you think that God is very critical with you, is upset with you, is very angry with you. Or... Uh, whenever there's a need of you and then you turn to maybe your, your, your loved ones, your, your parents or teachers, and they were not able to, to help you, you project that to God thinking that, oh, 
God is unreliable. So you see, our, experience, our negative experience of, 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 uh, with, with the people in authority in our lives, because of that, we project that to God, and because of that, we do not trust in Him. And that's why we need to, to correct that negative, our negative perception of God. And I would like to share with you three qualities of God, God that really help me uh, live, uh, be set free from, from, from fear or anxiety, okay? And I would be uh, quoting scriptures, so I would like you to write this down so that you could meditate on it, so that when you meditate on it, it will help you put your trust in Him. The three qualities of God is this. The one is God is all-knowing. And two of my favorite scriptures about this is from Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5, where it says, where God was telling Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Okay? And that applies to all of us. Before we were formed in the womb of our, our, of our mother, God already knows us. One of my uh, favorite verse also is from chap- Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. It says, for I know, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. So God is all-knowing. Jesus is all-knowing. He knows us more than we do to ourselves, more than we know ourselves. He knows us. The second quality of God is God is all loving. His love for us is personal. Okay? He loves us. You know, He doesn't love just like all the human beings in one. No, no, no. He loves you personally. You. He loves you. His love also is unconditional. Whether you're good or you're bad or whatever, God, God never stopped loving you. God loves you unconditionally. And the, 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 the other one is that God's love for you is eternal, forever. He never stopped loving you. Okay? And when we experience the love of God in our life, in 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, where it says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. So when we experience the love of God in our life, when 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 we get to know Him, when 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 we fall in love with Him and experience His love for us, fear and anxiety will slowly disappear. Okay? Because perfect love casts out fear. The third quality of God is God is all powerful. Uh, remember in the Annunciation when Angel Gabriel uh, come, uh, came before uh, uh, Mary and telling her that she would be the, the mother of the Son of God, and, uh, and Mary was telling her, oh, how could this be happen? You know, I'm a virgin. And a- the angel Gabriel told her that, remember your cousin Elizabeth? She couldn't bear a child for so many years. Right now, she's pregnant because with God, because there is nothing impossible with God. God is all-powerful. Nothing is impossible with God. With with whatever situation you're undergoing right now, maybe you have a terminal illness. Maybe you have a COVID-19 right now. Maybe you don't have work. You don't know where to get the money. God is all-powerful. Nothing is impossible with God. St. Faustina struggled with this, uh, uh, you know, not trusting in God. And Jesus told St. Faustina in diary, diary section 527, in, Jer- in, in that section, Jesus said to, 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 to St. Faustina, why are you afraid? Do you think that I will not have enough omnipotence to support you? So Jesus is speaking to all of us here also. Why are we afraid? Do we think that God 
will not have his omnipotence to support all of us? That's a question that we all have to ask ourselves. In the diary of St. Faustina, Jesus also said to her what pains him most. Okay? And it's not our sins. Yes, it is. It pains him. But what pains him most is our lack of trust. In diary uh, uh, St. Faustina in 1076, how painfully distrust of my goodness wounds me. Sins of distrust wounds me most painfully. It's not our sins. It's our distrust on God, Jesus. Another one is on uh, diary uh, section 1486. In 1486, it says, Jesus telling St. Faustina, My child, all your sins have not wounded my heart as painfully as your present lack of trust does, that after so many efforts of my love and mercy, you should still doubt my goodness. So if it is our distrust in him that pains him most, the opposite is what pleases him most also. Okay, in the diary uh, of St. Faustina in, in uh, section 1485, it says, Jesus telling St. Faustina, you will give me pleasure if you hand over to me all your troubles and griefs. Whatever you're undergoing right now, bring it to Jesus. Whatever is troubling you, whatever is causing you grief, bring it to Jesus. It pleases Him. Again, uh, in section 797, it says here, I am very pleased that you confide your fears to me, my daughter. Speak to me about everything in a completely simple and human way. By this, you will give me great joy. I understand you because I am God and man. If there's one scripture passage that I want you to remember, I know I've quoted several, it is this. It is from Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. It says, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Uh, and I would like to end with uh, something that I, that, I, uh, that I saw on Facebook. And we, we, we all need to, to apply this into our life. And it says this, make sure you test positive for faith. Keep this Keep distance from doubt and isolate from fear. Trust Jesus through it all. Jesus, we trust in you.